This is terrible. This is shocking. Do you think you're brave? I know. Good morning, everybody. It's absolutely lovely to see your faces on screen. Um, I'm sitting at home with Richard, joining you um, from just across the road from the Abbey, where uh, Catherine is getting ready to take the service for us with one or two people in the Abbey alongside her, as we are now allowed to do. Um, I just, I just want wanted to introduce two people um, who are both at home so that you have met them before they take part in the service. One of those is Amy, who is our Cudston student, um, and she is joining us from Cudston. Emily Robottom-Scott, Rob sorry, I'm getting my Amy's confused. And also Paul Wignall, who is the, our new team vicar in the bridge group of parishes who'll be reading the gospel for you. 
Um, I hope that I will see some of you at coffee later on. There will be coffee rooms. If you find yourself by yourself, just hang on in there and we'll do a bit of moving around. So welcome to you all. Special welcome to Emily and Paul joining us and participating in an online service for the first time. And over to Catherine. Welcome. As, as we join together to be church at home, acknowledging God's presence with us wherever we are, he makes every place a sacred space and we accept his hospitality knowing that we are the honoured guests of a generous host. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. If you're at home, you're very welcome to join in with the hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
we come to the point in our service where we remember those things that we regret, that we're not proud of. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning is read here in the Abbey by Josh Harris from Warborough. The reading this morning is taken from Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now, concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Josh. And now we hear Sarah and Natasha from the Baldens singing the Taze chant, Wait for the Lord.
Thank you. Now we have our gospel reading read by Paul in Long Whitnam. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Or it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and then trusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had made the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of these slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I've made two more. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I know that you are a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pray Praise to you, you oh, O Christ. Thank you, Paul. Now we join Sorrel in Berensfield. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now, concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, I do not need to write to you. This letter from St. Paul to the church in Thessalonica is an extremely precious document because it's the earliest text in the whole New Testament. It was written before the Gospels, before the rest of Paul's other letters. It was written in 50 or 51 AD, just 20 years after the death of Jesus. But what's amazing is that it feels like it was written for us here in South Oxfordshire today. Because, my sisters and brothers, what times, 
What seasons, what extraordinary, unprecedented times and seasons we find ourselves living in today. Such extraordinary times and seasons that I am joining you as a recorded message from St. Mary and St. Beren's Church, rather than being with you somewhere around the team in person. There were times this week, brothers and sisters, when things seemed to get crazier every day. Trump was winning the election, and then he wasn't, and the legal challenges in the US are still wrangling on. I don't need to tell you that we're back in lockdown, both eerily familiar, but also strangely different from the last lockdown in the spring. The craziest day was when I read the Oxford Mail earlier this week to read that a giant boa constrictor had escaped somewhere in Oxfordshire. I hate snakes. I've hated them my whole life. And that moment last week honestly felt like the last straw. A global pandemic, a global superpower seemingly insecure in its democratic processes, and a giant boa constrictor escaped somewhere in Oxfordshire. I'm not going to lie to you, brothers and sisters. I wanted to go to bed, pull the covers up over my head, and give up on the day. I think the Thessalonians would identify with that feeling because they were facing their own challenges. Paul writes a letter because he can't be with them in person, not because of a global pandemic, but because the early church was facing persecution to the extent that it was no longer safe to visit them in Thessalonica. But in a way, it's good that he couldn't be with them in Thessalonica all those years ago, because it means that we have the letter, which is full of encouragement to the early church. It is a letter full of hope and light. It says, I know things are hard, but you are doing a great job. Keep going. My brothers and sisters, I am not St. Paul. In fact, to be honest, I'm not sure St. Paul and I are going to get on when we meet in heaven. But I bring you the same simple message of encouragement today. You are doing a great job. Keep going. Paul tells the early church, you are children of light. Encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. That's the message. Keep being a light in the world. Keep, bringing, keep being people of hope, of love, of generosity. I know of so many ways that people in our congregations are doing that. And I know there'll be many more things that I don't know about. I know that across the team, people are donating toys to Rev Teresa in Berensfield to go to local children whose parents are facing very challenging financial circumstances. I know that in Dorchester, Denise is pioneering a knitted angel project, which will spread messages of hope across the village. I know that at least one member of our congregations went up to pick up discarded litter the day after firework night. And as St Paul says to the Thessalonians, so he says to us today, keep going. Be people of radical hope and love and generosity so that our churches shine like beacons of hope in these dark and troubled times. Our gospel reading today, the famous parable of the talents, is on the surface a bit more challenging. Honestly, I grappled with that reading this week because it feels really harsh. This one worker, he just has one talent, a small amount of money, and he buries it in the ground because he feels afraid. There are times this week when I have felt like that worker. I want to bury my head in the sand, frankly, because these are scary times and I feel afraid. His master's reaction is harsh. He is so angry that this man hasn't invested his talent and made it grow. The reaction is so harsh that I know some preachers this week will be saying, the master in that parable isn't supposed to be God. God would never be that angry. I think it helps if we read this story in the context of the whole New Testament. It's like the reverse of the feeding of the 5,000. In the feeding of the 5,000, as you know, a small boy has just two loaves and some fishes and he shares them and they multiply. In this story, a servant has a very small amount of money 
and he keeps it to himself and nothing happens. Nothing grows. Nothing is shared. The message I'm taking from this story is you may not feel like you have much at the moment. I certainly don't. You may not feel like you have much inspiration or much time or much money, but try to give a little. Try to phone or message someone and encourage them even if you only have 10 minutes. Try to give a small toy to the toy appeal even if you only have five pounds. And most importantly, try and take 10 minutes to light a candle and pray. Because we are the children of light and if, all we do, if we all do a little bit, if we all share a bit of love and a bit of hope, that will multi multiply right across the Dorchester team. Both of these readings have a strong sense of the return of Jesus. The early church believed that Jesus would return really soon in their lifetime. They were kind of surprised when people started dying and Jesus hadn't come back. In our times, it seems kind of weird to talk about the return of Christ because it's the sort of thing that crazy cults talk about and it doesn't seem like Jesus is about to return anytime soon. But it's one of the fundamental tenets of our faith, which we profess when we say the creed every Sunday. We say, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. It's a truth that we hold in our hearts, even if we don't think about it very often. As Christians, we have a great hope. We have a great hope in Jesus that there is resurrection life, that one day all the injustices of this world will be put right and creation will be restored to perfection. In fact, although we cherish this great gift of life, Although we strive to make the absolute most of our time here on earth by living lives of great love, in some sense we always have our eyes a bit on that wider horizon. We always have our, heart, have our sights set partly on eternity. We are living in the here and now, and we are working to further the coming of God's kingdom. But we know there's more good news still to come. And so we have a great hope to offer the world. This world that is striving to exist in this strange current reality, but also hoping that a vaccine will come soon. A world that is trying to stay in touch with friends and family online and on the telephone, whilst also hoping that we can be together again. So as Christians, we light a candle in the darkness, but we also have faith that the, the dawn is coming. This strange time we're in is really hard and it is not forever. Let's keep finding ways to encourage each other. Maybe send a card, share a favourite Bible verse or hymn, pray together over the phone or online. Let's keep praying and keep hoping. And my goodness, let's hurry up and find that escaped boa constrictor. Amen. Let's pause for a moment and reflect on what Sorrel has brought us. And then we will join together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we welcome Emily as she leads us now in our intercessions. Let us pray. Gracious God, may we continue to reflect on your calling to each of us, that we may continually strive to become more Christ-like, encouraging and building one another up through acts of kindness and generosity, remaining hopeful for the incoming kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of peace, we recognize now more than ever that we live in a world that is always changing. At this time, we pray for our prime minister and the government as they tackle COVID and embrace the hope of a new vaccine. And as they try to work out the best paths for our country. We pray that you will offer them strength, wisdom, and guidance through these difficult times. This morning, we pray for peace in Ethiopia and for all people across the world who are fleeing their homes, many risking perilous and deadly journeys just to find a safer place. May all world leaders come to reflect the righteous rule of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those in your church who so willingly give their time to spread the gospel of our Lord. May they continue to be enriched by the bounty of your Holy Spirit. Let us take this time also to remember our fellow Christians across the world who cannot tell others of your good news because of fear and oppression. We pray for a day when the persecuted will have the freedom to declare their love of you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we meet with our brothers and sisters here today, remind us that we have gathered through our loyalty and love of you. During this time of lockdown, we think of all within our communities. Those who may feel separated from others, from friends and family. Those who feel weary and confused by new rules. Any who have lost jobs, and any who struggle to work from home. Fill us with your spirit. Help us to grow in likeness with Christ, holding and encouraging each other and those in our communities in hope and love and faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing Lord, as the dark and cold of winter draws upon us, we pray for all those who through illness, sadness, loss, stress, depression, or any other reason, feel like winter is living within them. May we be reminded that Jesus is the light that shines through the darkness, the love that chases the cold away. Let us rejoice in the knowledge that after winter comes spring. As we share a moment of quiet together, we bring before you all who are in need of our prayers this morning. 
those from our congregations, any known personally to us, and those whose suffering is known only to you. Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, through your Son, we know that life is eternal. As we mourn the loss of our loved ones, whether recently or long ago, remind us of your love. Though we cannot see our loved ones now, we know that they are loved and as cherished as they were with us, and that they are with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our creator and redeemer, we offer you these prayers for your creation and for all the people of your world. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God of peace sanctify you. May he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before him. At the coming of our Lord Jesus with his saints, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the savior of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we join in singing the well-known hymn, The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free. I hope you know the words, but if not, I'm sure you can join in the chorus. It's been wonderful to join with you in worship this morning. I'm amazed at the wonders of technology and the blessings that it can be. So now I want to offer you God's blessing. I hope that you don't rush off after the service and that you can stay for coffee and have a chat and that God will go with you into this week, whatever this week holds for you. May God, may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>